Good evening, I'm the Fili of Vasquez Garza. Let me begin with a story. In 1968, I was studying civil engineering in Monterrey, Mexico. Because I was able to conduct a meeting and know the rules of conducting meetings, because I grew up in the Methodist Church, I ended up being the representative of my college before a student congress. Not because I was a great, a great leader, or I am a great leader, it was just that I knew how to run the meeting. That led to a very difficult situation later on when the student movement of 1968 began in Mexico. And I ended up being arrested several times. Not arrested, I was detained. I was never officially arrested uh, since uh, the state has to find ways of not doing that. I was never arrested. I was only detained for investigation. I was tortured, and I witnessed the torture of others. I witnessed the rape of my sister's students, and eventually the killing of several of my friends. Eventually, uh, I left Mexico and uh, went to Argentina. I uh, tried to return to Mexico and things didn't work out. And thanks to Amnesty International and the Mennonite Church and the Methodist Church, I found myself back in the United States after having been in seminary. Uh, thanks to Guillermo Chavez and others who were in Loreto, I found my way to Loreto where thank Thanks be to God, I found a therapist. And I found that I have uh, a problem that will never go away. Post-traumatic stress syndrome. And working with my therapist one day, he said, if you knew who the person is that ordered the killing, what would you do? And I said, right now my feeling is I would like to kill him slowly. A couple of years later, I found uh, one of the by coincidence in my own living room, one of the men who had been in charge of killing students in 1968. He told me the name of the person who organized the killing, someone I knew, someone I trusted, someone I used to work for. And I sat there dealing with that and going back to my therapist. He asked me again, what would you do? Rabbi Marty Gordon from the congregation Aguda Sachim in Loreto helped me and said, you know, when God says, vengeance is mine, he does not mean he's going to kill those whom you hate. He means give it to me. It is mine. And I will release you from that destructive power. I gave it to my God. And today I'm able to say, I do not want to kill that man. And if he were to be detained and tried for his crimes, I would be against killing him. He would not bring my friends back and he would only destroy my in my, own, in my own anger. John Shomley, one of the persons who helped me come to the United States as a refugee, used to tell me that the most destructive things for us is that kind of hate that we keep in our hearts, trying to destroy in order to build. There is no such a thing. We have to be open to the redemption of others. The United Methodist Church in 1956 has been against legalized killing by the state, capital punishment. And to this day, the United Methodist Church continues to be in that stand. I'm still angry. I still go to see a therapist. I asked him the other day, will it go away as I get older? And he said, no. He would always sleep with that. Thank God for those folks. If you're a therapist here, thank you.